Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at chapter 3 material. We're going to be looking mostly at uh, mean and standard deviation of data versus uh, mean and standard deviation of a frequency distribution. Uh, first let's talk about um, mean, um, median and mode and all that. Uh, for data, uh, I like to tell students to think of test scores. Um, when I say data driven, you're talking about test scores most of the time is a good example. Uh, you could uh, take the average of uh, speeds. I'm just thinking out loud here. Uh, take the average of shoe sizes. Um, basically anything that is uh, represented by data. Um, I'm just going to make up some, um, let's see, I think, I think I got an example I can use. That way we don't have to spend a lot of time calculating. I could use my handy dandy mouse better. Um, yeah, here's one. Uh, given the data of, and we're just going to use the numbers, we don't care what they mean. Uh, 22, 22, 26, 24, and 23. And we could say these were ages, or we could say they were lengths of hair and in inches, or we could say they were whatever you want to. It doesn't really matter what they are. Oh, excuse me. Uh, the first thing to do with data driven. First thing you do always is you put it in order. And the reason you put it in order is because you want to find some things and you can't find them unless you put them in order. So that's your first thing you want to do. So when we put it in order, we're going to get 22, 22, 23, 24, 26. Okay. And there's that data. Now, I just do everything in a list. Mean, median, mode, range, mid-range, and standard deviation and we'll do that later variance and standard deviation we'll do that later so i'm really not too concerned about that right now i'm worried more about these making sure everybody can find these values without any problem most of you can uh, because you've been doing it ever since you learned how to average your grades together uh, the mean the mean is equal to the summation of your numbers or your frequency over N, which is how many you've got. So in this case you would add all of these up and then you would divide by uh, the number I think what five and that'd be like 117 so the mean is equal to 117 over 5 because if you add all these up I think you get 117 and you divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and that will give you around 23.4. Now, remember uh, when I talked about uh, class boundaries and I told you if you had whole numbers, you go to the tenth. If you have tenth numbers, you go to the hundred. Same thing applies to these things right here. If these are whole numbers, so all of these are going to be to the tenth except for the mode, which you can't round because it's just a number. Um, so the mean is equal to 23.4. The median. The median is the middle of the order. Uh, not the middle of the range, but the middle of the order. So median, if it's odd, if n is odd, you're going to 
just get the middle. Which in this case would be, because the n is odd, n is equal to 5, so it's odd. You just find the middle, and there's the middle. That's why you have to put them in order. So in this case, the median is 23. Now what if you had six numbers here? Well, if you find the median of n is even, then you take the two middle terms, add them together, and divide by 2. So, I'm not going to go through that, but if you had another uh, 24 here, if there was a 24 right here, then that would be 6. You take the two middle terms, add them together, and divide by 2. Mode. Just remember with the mode, it's the most. They both start with MO. The, the letter that, I mean, the number that shows up the most. Uh, more than one term can be in your mode. Do not put zero for your mode because some teachers will mark that wrong. If there's, if there's no, if, if there's not a mode, some students will put zero for mode and the teacher will mark it wrong. Uh, so don't put zero. Say none. Say does not exist if there's none. Uh, put a word. Do not put zero like the number zero. <clears throat> so does anything repeat here? Yes. 22. So the mode is equal to 22. You can have two. It's called bimodal. You can have three. Trimodal. You can have four or more, which is polymodal. But it's not that big of a deal. Um, the one that shows up the most. So if you had 22 showed up three times and 23 showed up two times, then 22 would be your mode if it was that way, if that problem was like that. So this one shows up the most. 22 shows up the most. So it's the mode. Okay, what about the range? Range is real simple. Range is equal to the highest minus the lowest. That's it. So that would be uh, 26 minus 22. And that's equal to 4. So the range is equal to 4. Mid-range. Mid-range is just like the midpoint. And I'm going to put midpoint here because a lot of you remember the midpoint. You take two terms, add them together, and divide by two. Well, in this case, you take the highest plus the lowest and divide by two. And in that case, that would be 26 plus 22 divided by two. 48 divided by two, 24. So 24 is your mid-range. Um, notice how the mean and the mid-range, the, me, the mean is 23.4, the median is 23, and the mid-range is 24. They're all close together. They're all close together because the data is tight. It's not sloppy. It's not all over the place. Um, less variation equals tight data. I use the word tight meaning that it's real, it's valid, it's, it's together, it's, it's data that's not all over the place. Um, which also gives us close midterms. And I use midterms loosely, I'll put it in quotation marks. In other words, your terms that are in the middle, the mean, the mid-range, the median, they're all close together, which also gives less variation. Um, if the mean and the mid median and the mid range are not close together, then you've got you've got loose data, meaning that the data is all over the place, which means more variation. Uh, so this is what you want. You want this. Um, anytime you're dealing with data, anytime these the three numbers, mean, median, and the mid-range, 
anytime you have those three that are close together, that means your data is tight and there's not a lot of variation. Okay. Now, what is the standard deviation? The standard deviation, I'm just going to draw it in the picture. Here's our fail curve. And our standard deviation is what tells us what the bell curve is giving us. The middle of the bell curve is the mean. We found out how to find the mean. Um, but the standard deviation tells us how far and how wide our bell curve is. Um, and the way that you find the standard deviation, in other words, here's your standard deviation plus one standard deviation plus two standard deviations. So whatever our standard deviation is, we're going to add it to the mean here and then add it again to this to get that. Here we're going to minus, going to the left, you minus. You subtract the standard deviation from the mean and you subtract it again. So, you've got one standard deviation, two standard deviations to the right, one standard deviation, two standard deviations to the left. It is symmetrical. And 95% of the population will fall between two standard deviations. This is your empirical rule. It's in the book. You'll see it because you have these shaded regions and you'll have 95. I don't know what page it's on. We can get to that in the next video probably. Um, but if I have a, let's say we have a mean, uh, just an example, a mean of uh, 40 and a standard deviation of 5. And the way we use the standard deviation, and that's why you collect, that's why you calculate it, is you can set up your bell curve, and that's 40, 45, you add that and then you add it again and you subtract it and subtract again. So 95% of this data is going to fall between 30 and 50 and that's how you use standard deviation. Now calculating it you can do it several different ways but by hand, I'm going to wait and do it on the next video. Um, by hand is is drawn out, and we're, we're going to do that. I'm going to cover the mean. I mean the mean of a frequency distribution next, and then we'll come back together and do the standard deviation. So, find the mean of a frequency distribution. Now, the difference between what we just went over and a frequency distribution is. In the data driven, you have scores or ages. You got five or six, and you divide by five, and you get your median. But with a frequency distribution, you don't have that. I'm going to find the frequency distribution that I could use. I don't think there's one in here somewhere. I think it's in 3.3. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to use, and I get these are kind of like grades, but they're a little bit higher. These are IQ scores. 50 to 69. And 70 to 89. And one, sorry, 90 to 109. And 110. To 129 and 130 to 149. And this is IQ scores. Okay, right. And the number of people that scored is 233, 35, 233, 35, 7, and 1. And that's the number of people. All right, tell me what the mean is. I have no idea. This is not data. Data-driven was to take all these scores, put them in a 
a list and calculate the mean. Yes, that, that's what you're used to. You're used to taking the scores, add them up, divide by how many there are. You can find out how many there are. Let's see. There's 30. Let's see. 7 and, and 33. That's 40. That would be 75. That would be 77. 78. There's 78 people. So find their scores, add them all up, and divide by 77. Well, you don't know the scores. So you've got to figure out how to find the mean without having the scores. And that's what we're fixing to do. What you're doing to find the mean of a frequency distribution you're calculating it without the scores that's basically what you're doing because you have the number you have the number of people that took the test but you don't have the scores each one of them made where in the previous problem the previous example you had these scores this is data driven data driven is test scores this is a frequency distribution which counts the number of a's b's and c's or counts the number of uh, scores that are there um, now the first thing you do You've got the frequency. You're going to use the frequency, and we're not going. To, we're going to take the number sign off of it up here. We're going to call it F for frequency. Frequency. Okay, that's F. Now the now the the actual formula for the mean of a frequency distribution. I think it's on page 87. The mean of a frequency distribution is equal to the summation of f times x over the summation of f. Piece of cake. Okay, so take a few seconds and do that. Uh, what do you mean? I don't know how to do What are you talking about? Okay. You have to take f times x. Okay, multiply f times x. Well, we got f. There's f. What's x? x is the midpoint. Think of it like this. If you tried to graph this, you couldn't graph it because you got a range over here. You don't have a number. You don't have an X and a Y. You have a range and a Y, or whatever the case may be. This is a range. You can't plot a range. So we got to get a number over here that signifies something that we can calculate, and that's the midpoint. Okay, so let's do the midpoint. 50 plus 69, that's dang old 119. Well, that two will go into 11, 10 times, I meant 5 times. 5, and that'll leave 1 left over, 19, that'd be what, 9? And will that leave 10.5? I think that's close enough, government work. I got 59.5, so... That'd be 59.5, and then we're going to find the rest of them. Well, I can calculate them nine times, or I can just take 10 and add it to each one. So that'd be 69.5, 79.5, um, I'm sorry, 20, 20, 20, 20, I'm sorry. That'd be 79.5, and this would be 99.5, and add 20, this would be what, 1... 10.5, I'm sorry, 119.5, then add 10, I meant 20, that'd be 139.5. Okay, so you can forget this over here now, because now you have everything you need. No, we don't have everything we need. We've got to multiply f times x, and you got to add that up. So, I don't have any room up here. I've got a little room here, but that ain't going to work. So what I'll do is I'll go to the next page, and I'll draw this frequency distribution. 50 point, 
and then 69, and then 70 to 89, and then 90 to 109, 110 to 129, and 130 to 149. And 2, 33, 35, 7, and 1. And that would be 59.5, uh, 79.5, 99.5, 119.5, and 139.5. And that's your X. This is your F. And we really don't care about these anymore because they can't help us any as far as calculating. So we need to multiply f times x because we know that the mean of frequency distribution is equal to the, the summation of f times x. So we've got to multiply all our f times x's and divide by the summation of f. I think we said that was 77 or whatever this comes up to. Anyway, so we multiply f times x. Now I'm not going to do it with a calculator, f times x. Uh, I'm just going to write it out. So that would be 2 times 59.5, um, 33 times 79.5, 35 times 99.5, uh, 7 times 119.5, on and channel. 1 times 139.5. And you add, get a number. Each one of these is going to give you a number. And then you... That's a number, that's a number, that's a number, that's a number, that's a number. And you add all those up. Oops. Add all these up, and that's going to give you a number here, and we're going to call it the numerator. And that's this number right here, so it goes in the numerator. And then you're going to divide by the summation. I think we added up this to be 77, but we'll check. Uh, seven and I mean, 33 and 7, that's 40, and that's, uh, yeah, 40, it might be 87, I can't remember. Uh, 40 plus 35 is 45, 45, well, I was way off, 75, 75, so 40 and 35, 75, plus 3 is 78. So that would be over 78, and that would give you your mean of your standard deviation would be equal to whatever that number is over here, mm -hmm. divided by 78. And that's how you find the mean of a frequency distribution and a data driven set on a data table. Data, test scores, uh, classes, frequency distribution. And that's how you find the mean. Hope that helps.